Now let's delve into today's market overview. Trading demands dedication. It's not a quick or easy thing to do. That's something I always emphasize. The greatest challenge lies in failing to prepare for the inevitable difficulties. If you perceive trading as effortless and straight for war, you risk losing everything just like that. So there has been some movement in the Forex market this week. Let's check it out and see what we have here. As you can see, the euro is primarily closing around the 1.0950 mark, indicating a closure of its V-shaped pattern. The V pattern is indeed closing, yet the false breakout did not yield any significant results. Typically, after a false breakout like this, if the asset in this case moves downward, there's a high probability that the upward momentum will persist. So make sure to exercise caution. It stands to mention that the euro faces a massive resistance level ahead at 110, uh, which accounts for a total of 50 pips. So watch out. Uh, but once we hit 110, things start looking up for the euro. Basically, it sets a decent path for the week ahead. We're talking about a potential climb all the way up to around 1.13, specifically hitting about 1.12710. Here's the thing, though. Sometimes you're chasing these tiny movements, but you have to understand those tiny gains usually mean tiny profits, like really small ones, and your stop loss orders are standard. So basically, your risk-reward ratio stays pretty much the same. Next up, let's talk about GBP. GBP, as you can see, sped up a bit more than the euro, and now it's back in the area, so now we have to play the waiting game. The major issue here is that you always think, like, okay, it's back in the area, which means it's cheaper, so you need to buy it. But here's the thing. When we have a solid asset, let me give you an example, like BTC. Imagine you have this strong... BTC. You see, it doesn't need to do much, just messes with everyone a few times, but it keeps on moving forward. And it's crucial to understand that if, uh, if an asset is geared up to move, it will, in fact, do that, and there's no stopping it. Moving on to gold. Remember gold? I also brought that up before. There's been some serious accumulation going on with gold. Let me break down why gold's on the rise. The thing is, Many funds reckon the market is overbought and gold has been untapped. Because if you look at the big picture for gold, none of this craziness has happened. Now, there's this one thing I need to address. Someone recently said, hello, you said EMC shares would hit $50, but now they're dropping to $5. Well, first off, I never said they'd hit $50. First of all, what I usually say is they could get there. Second of all, EMC stocks have this really strong level at $5. They might spike up once, make a decent 20% move, but then pull back. I always trade based on probabilities. Like if an asset exits the channel, I keep trading it. That's what I'm all about. But I will never be like those folks saying, Bitcoins is going to break out this level now and then it'll hit 5,000. This number just pops out of thin air. What I actually said was, if it clears $5, there's a shot it could climb up. So no need to twist my words. I never pinpoint stuff like that. So make sure you're really paying attention to what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. All right, let's talk about oil. As you can see, you can actually move the level as far as oil goes. Oil surpassed the existing level. Now, oil has a new top level, essentially. This is the situation when the level has been repeatedly surpassed and nothing really happens. Oil's been standing still since November, but from November all the way through December, January, February, and half of March, it's been building up. They're trying to push oil to its upper boundary, but there hasn't been any major movement just yet. So, tread carefully. Oil is super volatile. Its volatility is like two to three dollars. You have to be extra careful. All right, let's switch gears to the S&P 500. Nothing, and I mean nothing, can beat the S&P 500. Any little dips are just instantly bought up, and the market tries to head towards new highs. This basically tells us that the S&P 500, and by extension, America, isn't ready to go down just yet. So it wouldn't be wise to try to short the S&P 500 right now. I'd probably wait for a strong level, like this one, for example. This is mirror-like level here. It's around 50.48. See? That's where the things start to get a bit shaky. 
the asset might have room to dip further down. So uh, there's not much we can do except wait it out. Because let me tell you, this is one of the strongest levels the S&P 500 has seen yet. And we have to wait for it. Honestly, a lot of you have a big problem with waiting. You're just sitting there and the asset moves ever so slightly and you're jumping on it. I bet many of you have thought, this is it. I have to enter during this movement. Try not to get caught up in those tiny movements. If you really want to get into trading for real, I mean really, then focus on trading those strong movements. Got it. So here's how I see it. I've got a pretty good idea of where the asset might head. I know where I'll set my stop loss order and I'm aiming to wait for only those really strong movements. So first and foremost, it's crucial to grasp what's likely to happen with the asset. Moving on, CHF, JPY, not much happening there. Canada, JPY, there's been quite a sweeping movement, especially around that level. I'm not a fan of those sweeping movements. AUD doesn't seem ready to make a move just yet. But hey, let's be real, levels can be moved. See, I've been keeping an eye on these bars. This accumulation limit, it seems to match up, which tells me the level was drawn correctly. Now, with the Aussie, there's a potential range from 0 0.6622 to 0 0.66675. But honestly, that's not quite hitting the mark. It's like 0 0.35, or rather even 0 0.50. You see, in situations like this, you have to switch to the hourly chart. If the volatility is normal, say about 20 pips, even take profit won't be enough. So, especially for those trading Forex, try to hold out for those really strong levels, the ones you'll trade from. All right, uh, let's keep going. Canada's not looking too lively. GBP, JPY, nothing happening there. As for JPY, well, uh, not much action for now either, you see. We had a beautiful solid level here, a uh, beautiful drop there and headed that way. Uh, we need to wait for those really strong levels. Now, on to the next. NZD, JPY, still quiet on that front. So let's keep it moving. Silver. So basically, silver is kind of picking up its pace, following in gold's footsteps. We've stepped into a solid long channel here, hitting up to around 26, with a chance to move in terms of gold. Remember, silver was here once. You may not see it here, but it was around $50. So silver's got some real potential and a decent room for movement. Silver was at $50. As far as I can recall, it was either 2010 or 2011. Yeah, I think it was 2010 or 2011 when silver hit $50. So you see silver's entered this strong long channel and it's still on the move. Nope, no natural gas. Let's talk Tesla. I'm not feeling too bullish on Tesla. I believe it's going to keep on dropping. They lowered the prices, that's an issue. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla dips back into the $100 range. Check it out. Sure, they've had some solid quarterly reports in the past, and when a stock shoots up as fast as Tesla did, it's bound to come crashing down. And now Tesla's facing some serious challenges. First off, there's some fierce competition. I mean, we're talking competition from American brands, and even the Chinese ones are gearing up. Ford. General Motors, they're all in the electric car game now. And you've got Audi and Mercedes making waves too. Mercedes even rolled out A-class, B-class, and C-class models that weren't even a thing in the US before. Back in the day, it was all about the C-class, but now you've got these affordable options hitting the scene. So instead of splurging on a Tesla, people are opting for these comfy, sleek German rides, and they're not even crazy expensive we're talking about entry-level Mercs. Sure, they might be a tad smaller, but a Mercedes is a Mercedes, right? Uh, although, I have to admit, Mercedes has taken a bit of a hit on the quality front lately. Uh, keep an eye on Tesla, folks. Uh, it's definitely on my radar for shorting. Uh, all right, let's keep it moving. Now, onto stocks. Uh, you see, the market's looking pretty good at the moment, don't you think? Apple's in the same boat. Their quarterly reports are losing steam. Apple just isn't what it used to be. Don't expect anything spectacular from Apple anytime soon. They took a massive hit, almost a billion dollars, because they scrapped their electric car plans. So on to the next. Euro AAUD NZD. ETH is still inching its way up. Sure, it's a slow climb, but there's been a hefty chunk of money pouring into ETFs. BlackRock's got them stocked up, so tread carefully. Volatility's off the charts right now for BTC USD.